Executive Director of the Door County Land Trust for the past 16 years and is honored to be involved in the permanent protection of so many special places throughout Door County. Truly a dream job. Dan has also served on the Board of Directors of Gathering Waters Conservancy, a statewide service center for the 50 land trusts doing business in Wisconsin. The Door County Green Fund and was, um, I lost my place and was appointed to a Governor's Advisory Council to help develop statewide rules for the popular Knowles Nelson Stewardship Funds. Currently, Dan serves on Gathering Waters Advisory Council. Dan is a graduate of UW-Madison, and before joining the Land Trust in 1996, he served as the Northeast Wisconsin Director of the Alliance for the Great Lakes. His wife, Heidi, is an early childhood educator, and together they have a 16-year-old daughter, Mackenzie, and a 12-year-old son, Nathan. Thank you for being here, Dan. Thank you. Well, thank you so much, Bonnie and the Miller Art Museum for inviting me here to talk with you today. And also, we are very excited about the uh, late fall exhibit, This Land is Your Land, and having all the wonderful, I think over 50 artists. It's just incredible uh, the amount of people that have been snooping around our nature trails over the past 12 months. And I know I've been out on, on our... Uh, trails and have run into artists sort of deciding which preserve they want to be working on and and some of them were down to their last two selections so I think they're having a lot of fun wandering uh, the special places that we're all working to protect and capturing them and in, in a great way that we'll all be able to see in a in a few more weeks so thank you for inviting the land trust today and thank you for the land, inviting the land trust to be part of the uh, exhibit coming up my goal today is to give you uh, a little bit uh, more of a detailed picture of the Door County Land Trusts and what land trusts are and how we go about uh, specifically protecting the lands that are important to this community. And I think by the end of this uh, presentation you'll have a, a, a much better detailed picture of uh, where we're working and how we're working. And uh, certainly we'll open it up to questions uh, after we, uh, I give more of a presentation. Uh, before I begin, uh, just a little bit of a history. The Door County Land Trust was established in 1986. So we are, are going into our 26th year of uh, uh, working here in Door County. We have a staff of seven, and in fact, our main office building is we're sort of neighbors. We're right down the uh, street on Fifth Avenue, a little bit uh, kitty corner across the street from the White Lace Inn. We purchased a, a beautiful old building that used to house the Sturgeon Bay Visitor Center for a number of years there. I believe the building was constructed in the 1870s, and uh, I think it fits well in our mission of preservation and we're doing a uh, big native landscaping project out in our front yard that should be completed next year. So feel free to always stop in the office and pick up some maps or brochures or, or what have you. Uh, we are, uh, have a 17-member board of directors. Our president, Tim Stone, is, is, is in the back, and uh, so we're governed locally and focused locally. And of course, our little tagline is we're preserving Door County's finest open spaces and wild places. Specifically, we have a mission statement, and that is to preserve, maintain, and enhance lands that contribute significantly to the scenic beauty, open spaces, and ecological integrity of Door County. So you can take a mission statement and pick out certain words, and it'll give you a much clearer idea of what we're doing. Uh, we have a very broad mission in the sense that we're just not focused on the very rare ecosystems of Door County. That certainly is part of our mission, but we're also very interested in the scenic open spaces of the rural character of Door County and what can we do as a community group to help protect some of the beautiful open spaces that Door County is known for. So on one hand we have the open space side of our mission and on the other we have where are those rare and endangered uh, natural community types that need protection and together that encompasses um, our, our full scope of our mission. Before we talk more specifically about the land trust, uh, Door County Land Trust, we may want to answer the question, what exactly are land trusts? It's kind of a confusing word for some of uh, the folks that have never heard of the word land trust. Uh, it, it wouldn't be easy to ascertain uh, if we're part of a commercial property venture, development venture, or a banking venture, because the word trust does throw uh, folks off. But what land trusts are is we're nonprofit organizations and we're community-based. So just like your churches and your uh, YMCA's and, 
and your Boys and Girls Club, we are set up as a nonprofit organization. We have a board of directors that govern our policy and our direction. And typically, land, trace are, land trusts are very community focused and community based, working in a specific geographical location. The first one was established uh, right around 1900. So land trusts have actually been around for a long time. A man named Charles Elliott uh, was living in Boston. And this is kind of interesting that this was happening in the late 1800s, was very concerned about the development Boston was going through, uh, going under and, and spreading out further and further from the city center and into some of the open spaces at that time that, uh, that they were taken for granted that suddenly were being transformed. So Charles Elliott had this idea of why don't we get community members together and form an organization that can work to holding some of these special places so that they'll be around for future generations to enjoy. So he formed the Trustees for Reservations back around 1900 as a private nonprofit organization focused on the protection of landscapes important to that community. And that's how the land trusts in the United States were born. And the Trustees for Reservations is still a very strong land trust and going on. They celebrated their 100th anniversary uh, a few years ago. And uh, today, there are over 1,700 land trusts operating around the country. So it's, 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 it's obviously a successful model and one that's been replicated in communities throughout the country. And together, these 1,700 land trusts have helped to protect over 47 million acres of land in the United States. So it's, uh, it's very successful, not only in the number of community-based organizations with this focus, but the results speak for themselves. This is a graph that's uh, fairly fuzzy. You might not be able to read the details, but the graph line is pretty self-evident. And this is, the num this is the growth of the number of land trusts in this country over time. And you can see that starting around 1980 is when the number of land trusts throughout the country that were established just skyrocketed. And I think that makes sense because that's when I think a lot of the development pressures really started to hit not only just on the east and west coast, which is where a lot of the original land trusts were established, but here starting in the Midwest and uh, uh, in other parts of the country, that's when communities really got concerned about what can we do? These, this old um, farm field where we used to play in is now, is now not there. That wood lot is, is one of the last wood lots remaining in our community. What can we do as a community to protect that? Those type of questions really started to get uh, uh, posed and so around 1980, you had this tremendous growth of land trusts that were popping up all over the country. And in Wisconsin, the Door County Land Trust, being 26 years old, was the four, is the fourth oldest of the 50 land trusts in Wisconsin now. So just in the last 26 years, the growth of locally based nonprofit groups with a land mission has skyrocketed here in Wisconsin as well. Well, what have we done in our first 25 years? Well, with the help of uh, a lot of community support, we have protected over 6,500 acres in Door County, five, over five miles of water frontage. We have established 33 public nature preserves throughout, the, uh, throughout Door County. And we have done a lot of work in bringing in outside dollars to leverage community dollars in doing this work. And we have estimated that from every dollar we get from a a supporter or a land trust member here in the community, we are able to protect $4 worth of land by doing that leveraging, by getting donations of land from landowners to getting federal grants and state grants and, and other foundation grants that we could uh, uh, get to leverage a private dollar that comes in. So we've done a, a, a really a, a fantastic job of leveraging uh, uh, individual support uh, that comes into our organization. And member, that individual support is what we call our members or our annual supporters, and they really make our work possible. Uh, they provide the resources for us to help to do land acquisition when purchasing a property makes sense for us. Organizational investments, we need staff to write the big grants and to manage the lands once we get them, uh, and to do all the negotiations of securing um, very complex land negotiation and deals. And of course, the land stewardship and land restoration. We have 33 public nature reserves. I mean, that is a huge undertaking. That's more than the number of, uh, of, of, of county and state parks. And so our nonprofit staff oversees that responsibility of maintaining these, these preserves that we want to and do make available for public use. And uh, again, that's all provided 
through private, private support. This is a map. Again, you probably won't be able to pick up much of the details of the individual names and all of that, but I think on the left, or your left, my right, gives you a sense of uh, the geographical representation. These are uh, 30, we're, you know, slide's a little outdated, 30 of the uh, public uh, nature preserves that we have established throughout the county. And you can see that we've tried as an organization to be geographically representative of all areas of Door County. And so up on the left-hand corner is Washington Island, which is really interesting because we've done a lot of work on the island since 1997. And when we first started working there, our first um, uh, of all those blue dots, one through nine, the first one was established in 1997. And when we first got to the island, there was really no place, if you got off the ferry and you want to say, hey, where can you know, where you go walk on a public space and with the nature trail and, and, and do that. There was really absolutely no place on, on the island to be able to do that other than in a few um, uh, county parks that were really not set up in a nature-based way. So we've worked hard with the Washington Island Committee that we established to identify the best places on the island and you can see the results over the past uh, 15 years. And in Southern Door we have uh, uh, a, a few preserves and in all points in between and on both coasts of the bay as well as Lake Michigan. So these are lands we own and manage. In addition to that, we also work with private landowners to do what are called conservation easement agreements. And conservation easements are when a landowner is concerned about, let's say they own an 80 acre property and they're concerned about the future of that property. They may have a rare and endangered plant community or it may just be a fantastic view that uh, they feel that there's some responsibility for ensuring the permanent protection of. They can work with us on what is called a conservation easement, which is a legally binding contract that runs with the deed of the property. So once they sell the land or pass it down to their heirs, the terms of that agreement stay in place. And typically what that agreement is all about is what type of future use and development can take place on that property. And typically what it would say is if you, you know, let's say you've had an 80 acre property and you can have a single family residence over here, but let's keep this important ecological community intact and have no development in this area of the property. And so that's written into an agreement form and that's a permanent agreement. And there's been over 64 conservation easements with landowners from people who have beautiful farm, working farms in Southern Door, um, all the way up uh, onto Washington Island again, that have entered into this permanent agreement with the land trust. And now we're responsible for making sure the terms of those agreements are followed into the future. But this has been a wonderful tool to get the private landowners involved in conservation here in Door County. So we sort of have the lands we own and manage on one arm, and then these private lands that we have these in, uh, contracts that we have to enforce over time on the other. And those are the two ways that we work on protecting lands here in the county. I just want to run through some slides, some beautiful photos to give you a sense of the type of landscapes we're operating uh, in and what we're trying to protect. Because our goal is not to own the whole county. <laughs> our, our goal is to, is to identify and protect the best of the best. Those things that we feel are community assets to the community that, will, uh, that we all would like to have some representation of so future generations can be inspired by these places as well. So we have, uh, 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 have taken a lot of the research that's been done in Door County to identify where the best ecological spots are, um, and we've kind of put together a portfolio of, of places that we work to protect. Uh, one of the, the first slide here shows uh, uh, an area, what we call our Detroit Harbor Preserve. This is Detroit Island in the foreground, in the ground, and that's Washington Island in the back. And there's a beautiful bay called Detroit Harbor. If any of you are boaters or sailors, it's a very shallow bay, as you probably know. But it's uh, and on the very north end of uh, the top of the Detroit Island, and just on the other side, there's this beautiful sort of estuary system. And that's where we're working to protect lands and, and have a lot of land holdings on currently. Also on Washington Island is Washington Island's only inland lake. Some of you haven't been to Washington Island many times. You probably don't even know it exists. It's called the Little Lake Nature Preserve. And we own the whole northern two-thirds of this beautiful lake. And what makes this place so incredible, it's got a great nature preserve if you ever, or hiking trail if you're there, I encourage you to take it, is that the lake is only about, literally about 150 feet away from the big waters of Lake Michigan and Green Bay. And it's just separated by a little cobblestone ridge. 
So you can sit on that ridge and look off to the lake and see for miles and miles. And on the, this other side is this tranquil little lake. And uh, so uh, we've been working with the community up there to uh, protect and make this available for the public. There's also some uh, very uh, unique ecosystems on Detroit, uh, on Washington Island. One is the Big and Little Marsh area, and the other is Coffee Swamp. These are little places that don't lend themselves well to having them with hiking trails and things like that, but they harbor a lot of rare and endangered plants and animals, and so we're working to protect uh, those type of ecosystems as well. You may have uh, heard there's been, there was some news back in 2008 about us acquiring uh, uh, the uh, 400 acre uh, Three Springs area. And we, call, we have now called it the Three Springs Nature Preserve. It is about two miles east of uh, Sister Bay, just off of County ZZ and uh, Old Stage Road. And this is a beautiful, just a set of beautiful springs on this property that feed into North Bay. And it also has a rich natural history to it. There's some old historic barns from the 1880s on there that are that uh, uh, are, are, are still present and in, and in good condition. And in fact, in eight, 1950 was one of the, uh, the first sort of nature centers that was established on this property by, uh, uh, and it ran for about six years, in which the, I, the goal of this nature center was to have a collection of all native animals that existed in Door County. And we can still walk in the woods today and see some of the cages and, uh, that were set up back then to house deer and, and, and bear and what have you. And in fact, there, there's uh, some memorabilia we've been getting of a token that would get you into this nature preserve. And so it's, it, it's kind of funny how it went full circle that now it is a nature preserve again. And uh, so if you're ever, uh, that's got a great hiking trail system as well, we encourage you to visit that. In the heart of Ephraim, we have the Ephraim Preserve at Anderson Pond, which is on Moravia Street um, and Anderson, just one block up from the highway. So, and in the heart of Ephraim, there's this is beautiful wetland complex, and the Niagara Escarpment sort of forms a whole ring around it. And it's just this gym uh, right in the middle of the village. And in 2005, we worked with a lot of folks in the village to protect this place that they long treasured. And uh, we actually bought the land from the original um, uh, Anderson family uh, descendants of uh, Aslog Anderson, who with uh, Iverson helped uh, establish Ephraim back in the uh, uh, mid 1800s. Oh boy, what happened there? All right, Bayshore Blufflands, one of our older preserves on, on Bayshore Drive, uh, over 400 acres of Niagara Scarpment property, and some of the best views in Door County. If you've ever driven along Bayshore Drive and look to your right and if there's a big, huge field with bluffs, that's our property. <laughs> hmm. Sorry about that. It wants to go faster. Maybe, I, maybe it's telling me something. The Grandview, we'll talk a little bit about the uh, Ellison Bay Grandview property in just a bit. Uh, the woods at Monument Point, is, again, is on top of the escarpment south of Vague Harbor, about 100, uh, 100 acres there. Uh, protecting the escarpment has been a big focus of ours. In the middle of the county, uh, uh, there was a, an old farmstead that had this beautiful 40-acre wetland on it and called the uh, Oak Road Wetlands Preserve. And it was a part of a 150-acre farm that was uh, being sold. And for us to be able to protect the wetland, we had to buy the farm. <laughs> so we now have a 200-acre, and we restored the whole farm field into uh, uh, a, a community type that's going to support the waterfowl and all the bird species that love this wetland complex. And so that whole restoration project is done. So if you ever want to walk a trail through a field that's been restored over the last six years, Oak Row Wetlands Nature Preserve is the place to go. Um, our, we put a 40-acre prairie in that in July is as tall as your head and is in full bloom. And all the trees we planted are starting to get this tall. So it's just a great uh, sort of inspiring way to, of, of what can happen with a lot of uh, energy. And uh, the nature trails are all now in place there. Hibbard's Creek is another focus of areas ours. We have 100 acres with some springs and, and the creek itself. Kangaroo Lake is our oldest nature preserve. Uh, we started working there and buying land in 1995. And together with the Nature Conservancy working in partnership, um, it's over 700 acres and almost the whole entire north end of off the causeway of double E looking north. That's uh, almost all of it's now under permanent protection and available to the public. 
Southern Door, uh, we worked on the Brussels Hill with a landowner there and over 400 acres of these beautiful wetlands on top of the uh, escarpment where Brussels Hill uh, is located is, is now under protection. Again, on top of the escarpment, we have the Lautenbach Woods Nature Preserve. This is a photo of taking, this plane is probably sitting right above the village of Egg Harbor, and it's looking north. And so you could obviously see the bay, but you can see in here this little uh, different coloration, and that is a very unique fin, wetland fin system, that we didn't even know was there. No one in the conservation community was, no one was there, but it was just fortuitous that in the year 2000, we had two landowners who didn't know each other, didn't, didn't know they were both going to do this, donate pieces to land to us. The first land donation was down here in the southern end, and the second was down here. And so we were working with these landowners, and we thought the forests were beautiful, and that's why we wanted to protect it. And they said, well, you should come in the back. There's this wetland stuff in the very back of the property. So we got back there and realized there were some nice plants back there. We bought the Bureau of Endangered Resources from the state of Wisconsin in, who did a botanical survey and say, this is a remarkable community. It is now uh, a hundred acre preserve. Almost all of the uh, fin system and the surrounding forest is protected and it's a state natural area for the rare sp uh, plants that exist in this community. We are working with the Chambers Island Association and have, and have actually acquired a track of interior forests on Chambers Island and we're looking to do more with that group. And we have a, a new focus of area of ours that we haven't worked too much uh, on yet, and that's that corridor from uh, the village of Ephraim all the way down, working southeast to Bailey's Harbor. There's this wetland corridor that runs the whole length, uh, that hooks basically the bay to the lake in an ecological corridor. And we're working with all the landowners in that area to determine where are the best places here that we maybe want to focus our attention on. Thorpe Pond is a partnership project we're doing with the state of Wisconsin. I, I love showing this photo because I don't think anyone could show me a more circular lake <laughs> than that. Um, but it's this beautiful pond system and a great forest system that's, that surrounds uh, Thorpe Pond. And again, uh, working in partnership with the state of Wisconsin on this area. Sir, where is Thorpe Pond? Thorpe Pond is off of Double E. So if you're heading Double E and you're heading west towards Egg Harbor, and suddenly Double E takes this big curve that's curving because Thorpe Pond's in the way. And so it's curving out of that. So <laughs> off to your right, and you won't, Thorpe Pond exists in the interior, so you won't see it from the road. But when you're taking that curve, now you can picture that that circular lake is, is in there somewhere. Solitude is a brand new nature preserve of ours. Uh, going from that beautiful Jackson Port to Bailey's Harbor Drive along Highway 57, you're going through the woods in Meridian County Park, or right at the corner of Lagerquist Road and Highway 57, right past the little cemetery there, we have a new 140-acre nature preserve that was gifted, us, gifted to us by the late Kate Rohr, in which we are calling the Solitude Nature Preserve. And um, it's, uh, there isn't really established trail yet, but we're hoping to get a marked hiking trail there and, and uh, making this available. Uh, for people. It's just a very inspiring place. The Legacy Preserve at, at Claybanks uh, is, is a property that exists on, along Lake Michigan, in fact 3,000 feet of Lake Michigan shoreline, uh, 100 acres. Um, there's a huge bluff of which Claybanks gets its name from uh, that, is, uh, that we start off at as far as where the trail is concerned and you can just overlook the lake and it's one of the best views in Door County and this is situated about four miles south of the Ship Canal. Kellner Fen, speaking of Ship Canal, is right here. The city of Sturgeon Bay is right there. And this big, beautiful wetland complex is situated right off the lake. And you can see the sand dunes in the foreground. Well, those sand dunes were established when Lake Michigan was much higher and it was receding uh, a couple of thousand years ago after the glac uh, glaciers uh, left the area. And the sand dune cut off water that was still behind part of Lake Michigan and created what we call these embayment lakes. And you can, if you look at a map of Door County, Kellner Fen is one of these first cut off parts of Lake Michigan that are now their own water bodies. And going up the county, you have Kellner Fen, you have Dunes Lake, you have Arpter, Schwartz Lake, uh, uh, Clark Lake, Kangaroo Lake, Europe Lake. And they're all about a quarter mile off Lake Michigan. And those are all, uh, bays of the old Lake Michigan that got cut off by sand dunes 
and have since been formed their own lakes. And each of them are very unique in their own way. And Kellner Fen is surrounded by a, a floating bog mat, one of those bog mats that just sort of bounce up and down and uh, uh, full of carnivorous plants, pitcher's plants, and uh, great orchids. It's just a, a magical place. And the Sturgeon Bay Ship Canal is, uh, as far as one of the big feathers in our caps, it was working many, many years with the utilities uh, and the city of Sturgeon Bay and having this place that the public was using de facto as a park for, for decades and decades. And this was the uh, talk for um, a lot of different proposals, in, including a coal-fired power plant. Uh, it was originally bought to possibly hold a, a, um, a coal-fired power plant and then talks of a nuclear power plant and then coal-fired power plant came back up again and a whole bunch of different proposals. Well, we raised the uh, uh, subject along with the South Lake Michigan Drive Landowners Association and the Nature Conservancy is, well, what about the idea of just leaving it the way it is? And uh, the city voted in favor of that as well as the utilities. Uh, of course, the utilities couldn't just give it to us, so it took a lot of fundraising and a lot of grants to be uh, written and received. But almost this whole big chunk now, um, it actually consists of about 450 acres, is now a public nature preserve with some beautiful trail systems on it and about uh, 800 feet of sand beach. So that's not all 33, but I think that gives you a flavor. And, and we certainly feel as an organization that uh, our lands that we protected are inspiring our community and that they'll continue to do so in the future. Our lands are typically, for the most part, I, in fact, I can't even think of one exception that someone can't just go walk on and they will, but about uh, 14 or 15 now of our nature preserve have established hiking trails on them. And uh, so we always encourage uh, public use of our properties and uh, want them to be a community benefit. And so uh, we have school groups that uh, use our properties. Uh, we recently, and I'll talk about it in a little bit, worked with the Girl Scout Camp, uh, Camp Cuesta, to acquire Camp Cuesta so that can be a place for the Girl Scouts to come to uh, for many years to come. So again, we're not doing this just for our board of directors and our staff. We're doing this work for our community. Stewardship and restoration is a, becoming a big part and I believe Bill, uh, uh, is that you, Bill? It is. Yeah, there you go, there you go, hardworking Bill. Um, we have a number of volunteers, uh, uh, dozens and dozens that come out on Tuesday afternoons or Tuesday mornings with us and work out on our lands to do uh, monitoring the land to make sure everything's okay, restoring lands, getting rid of invasive plants such as buckthorn and honeysuckle and, and uh, phragmites. And of course, they help us get our preserves ready so we can share them with the public, whether it's building a wildlife viewing platform, putting up sails and uh, signs and trails. Uh, they just do a, a lot of work for us, and our hats are, are off to them. And this was part of the big restoration project at, at Oak Road where we were planting tens of thousands of trees and shrubs. Just want to talk to you a little bit about our current projects. Some of them have been in the news recently, and some of them haven't been. but. Uh, uh, this is what we're currently working on this year, where we just closed uh, this spring on the Grandview property, which is that big, beautiful view as you go down the uh, Ellison Bay. And off to your left um, is one of the best views in the state of Wisconsin. And we have now successfully purchased and established the Grandview Scenic Overlook and Park. Uh, we've done that in partnership with the town of Liberty Grove. In fact, we will be transferring the property to the town to operate as an overlook and park uh, uh, very shortly and a lot of volunteer hours have gone into getting rid of the blacktop parking lot that was there and, and making it even more scenic than it was uh, before we started. And it's a 16-acre tract and even has beautiful wetland ponds down at the bottom of the property. And So if you're driving north and you go past Sister Bay, keep on going and get out and uh, visit our, the newest park. And this is giving you a concept of what eventually, over the next two years, uh, the proposed park will consist of, including a network of hiking trails and, and signage and that sort of thing. Uh, we also worked on a very exciting project that we closed on in this spring. Uh, our largest acquisition that we've done as, as an organization, and the largest acquisition, conservation acquisition in Door County in over 44 years, and that was working on what is establishing the Schwartz Lake Nature Preserve at Shivering Sands. Uh, it's got two wild lakes on it, Schwartz Lake being one of those, one of those embayment lakes as I was referring to earlier, as well as Arpter Lake, which is the little sister to Schwartz Lake. Uh, but both beautiful, undeveloped lakes, 
um, uh, uh, about as pristine as Door, in Door, of Door County as you can get. And this gives you an idea of where this is located. Uh, this is Whitefish Dune State Park and Clark Lake, and the two lakes, Schwartz and Arpter in here, and then that red boundary is the acquisition we did right along, uh, um, it has a couple of access points off of Glidden Drive. If you're familiar with Glidden Drive, that would give you an idea of where uh, the new acquisition is. And I mentioned Dunes Lake is one of the embayment lakes, and you can see here's Dunes Lake right there with Shivering Sands Creek flowing out, out of Dunes and into, uh, into Lake Michigan. Just a more close-up of, of the piece that we were able to acquire, uh, 483 acres. We have not mentioned this to anybody. You may be the first crowd to hear this, but uh, late this summer, or, or early this summer, we actually uh, worked with two families, and we are establishing a brand new nature preserve, which will be called the Heinz Creek Nature Preserve. If you're going to, again, that corridor from Jacksonport to Bailey's Harbor, and you'll, Heinz Creek flows under Highway 57, and in the spring, you'll often see cars pull over because it's a class three trout stream. So a lot of fishermen have always used Heinz Creek. Heinz Creek is the creek that drains Kangaroo Lake into Lake Michigan. And on the east side, it's just these rolling old sand dunes, and Heinz Creek sort of meanders through them all. And uh, our, uh, working with these two landowners, we were able to basically acquire almost all of Heinz Creek from the highway to where it flows into Lake Michigan. Um, so we're very excited uh, about this particular project. And here it is uh, uh, on an aerial photo. You can see Kangaroo Lake off on that corner, Lake Michigan down at this corner, and uh, the sand dunes up on the top with the woods in the bottom, and, and somewhere right in the middle is where Heinz Creek flows through the whole entire nature preserve. Uh, we don't have any trails or any signage up yet, so probably won't be announcing this until the springtime. We've also just uh, received, uh, about uh, t three weeks ago, a land donation which will establish the Carlson Nature Preserve along Highway Q and uh, um, Woodcrest Road, I believe it is. Yeah, Woodcrest, Woodcrest um, which is uh, north of Bailey's Harbor, between Bailey's Harbor and Sister Bay. Nice, beautiful. Again, this is sort of the scenic beauty of Door County, isn't this sort of quintessential Liberty Grove type of landscape that uh, exists up there? I wanted to mention this that we did, uh, we've been doing some purchasing over at our Kangaroo Lake Preserve, and one of the more interesting ones is we worked with the Girl Scouts of Northeast Wisconsin. They have an old Girl Scout camp called Camp Cuesta. Uh, they had uh, a, a, you know, a big parcel there along with their complexes of, of buildings where the girls would, uh, would congregate and they would do summer programs there. Well, they kind of viewed all the land as excess, and so we worked out this partnership because it bordered lands we owned. And so we were able to acquire most of all of the undeveloped lands, and they kept their 10 acres and their um, uh, campus, if you will. And so the girls uh, are going to continue to be able to go to the campus and still be able to utilize all the lands. And in fact, we've established some more hiking trails in there. And so it's this great partnership between us and the Girl Scouts and be able to uh, you know, keep these kids who need to be outdoors more than ever um, uh, connected to our lands. Uh, we've done some more uh, uh, Niagara escarpment uh, projects at our woods at Monument Point. We've expanded our coffee swamp. Well, we will be in the next couple of weeks. In fact, I just signed the closing papers on uh, one of our Big and Little Marsh uh, uh, acquisitions that we are doing. We're, all in all, we're doing four purchases this fall, which help expand some of these preserves, as well as our Lautenbach Woods Nature Preserve. Just put a plug in, connecting art to nature. Wood, uh, Woodwalk Gallery is right across the street from our uh, Nature Preserve uh, trailhead and parking lot. So uh, you can do a great combination of uh, connecting to the arts and the environment here, and we have a beautiful trail system at Lautenbach Woods, uh, one of my favorites. Another big project that uh, you will be hearing about probably this winter is we are putting a, all of our portfolio together of all the 25 years of our work into a guidebook. It's going to be about a 75-page guidebook on uh, the guide to the places that we've protected. And it not only will highlight all these nature preserves and beautiful photographs, but there'll be little stories about why Door County is special. There'll be a story on the Niagara Escarpment and what is it, uh, some, some uh, history um, of folks, uh, of, of individuals that help make Door County the place that it is will be profiled. So it's going to be a very beautiful book, and uh, uh, we're excited that we uh, just got word that we got full funding for it. So we're proceeding 
with that. Today, you can walk away with our newest map. We have a new map of our hiking trails of Door County. In fact, I'm gonna step away for one second because I think I have it right here. In the back is not only a brochure about the land trust, but in here is, is a great fold-out map of, of all the preserves that have land trust hiking trails on it. So if you have guests or visitors or just uh, want to see some of these places, this map will be your guide. So again, our work, we feel, is investing into our, our future. We've got to get these little guys out, uh, out, of the, out of the classrooms, out of their, out of their uh, iPods or whatever they're hanging out in and uh, into the land. And, and we feel by preserving the best of the best of the Door County that we can have inspire future generations just like Door County has always been inspiring us with its beauty and encourage you that there is a membership brochure here that if you want to join our organization and support us financially, um, we would welcome that. And uh, membership does have advantages. We have a number of hikes throughout the year that are membership only, a lot of events and outings. So we have a great network. Over 2,000 people are part of the organization. And uh, we have, uh, I think, a lot of fun working, to, working in partnership to uh, preserve our finest open spaces and wild places. So encourage you to sign up. So that is the uh, sort of the formal PowerPoint presentation on who we are and I hope that gives you a better flavor of uh, the land trust and what we do and, and how we do it. <laughs>